In this tutorial we're going to look at the toolpath tiling feature which is used when the size of the part that you want to create exceeds the workable area of your CNC. In this demonstration we'll be showing you the feed through option where one of the axes exceeds the workable area. So let's go to file close. So let's go and open an existing file from the project folder we're going to open toolpath tiling dash 3D. Okay, so here we're working with a mantelpiece which has dimensions of 72 inches wide, a height of 9 inches and a thickness of 1.5 inches. Now my desktop machine has a workable area of 24 inches by 24 inches. So the height is okay at 9 inches, however we're going to struggle with the width of 72 inches, which is where we're going to use the toolpath tiling feature for the feed through option. So let's switch over to the toolpaths tab just to give us a good idea of what we're working with let's go ahead and preview all of those toolpaths there okay so this is the part that we're working with and with this mantle we're going to look at splitting this up into sections to machine using the feed through options with the tiling manager so let's go ahead and tile our windows horizontally, that way I can see the 2D view at the top and I can see the 3D view at the bottom there. And I'm just going to close out of the preview toolpaths form and then to access the toolpath tiling manager we simply click on this icon here to open up the tile toolpaths. And I can actually move this window around and leave this open whilst I continue to interact with other features in the software. For example, if I wanted to switch on the visibility of the toolpaths, I can do that whilst this toolpath tiling manager is open. Now, nothing will happen in terms of tiling my job until we actually use the option to tile our toolpaths. If I just move this over to the right over here and then check this option to tile the toolpaths then we now have access to control the tiles that we want to create. In the previous tutorial we covered the individual tiles option where we want to cut a project larger than our workable area in both the X and the Y axis. Now here we're going to focus on feed through options in particular we're going to look at feed through in X. So use the option there to apply that feed through in X and you'll see that we're now able to update our tile size. Okay, so tile width here is 72 so that's just picked up the actual job size of our part so it knows that we have a width here of 72 and this is the actual size that we need to change. Okay, so we're working with a 24 by 24 inch machine so I'm going to change the X value here to be 24 in there and then what I can do then is use this option here to update the tiles. So you may notice that in the 2D view we now have three tiles. We've got three different tiles here and you'll also notice that in the 3D view we now only have the focus on this one tile whereby we can only see the visibility of the toolpath that we had selected for this particular tile. You'll also see that T1 is highlighted red, it's telling us that that is the active tile. To change the active tile we could use this drop down menu here, so I could switch to tile 2, see T2 is now red here and the focus of the visibility of that toolpath is for the second tile that we've got there and then T3 moves the focus onto the third tile on the right hand side. Not only can I access the tiles using this drop down menu here but I can double click in the white space of uh, each particular tile so you can see now my focus is on the second tile and if I double click over here my focus is back on the first tile. So let's demonstrate the actual toolpath previews for each of the tiles that we will feed through in X to get a better understanding of how toolpath tiling works. So I'm just going to take the manager and I'm just going to move it over up to this position here that way we can see the 3D view there. I'm just going to put that in the ISO view and then we're going to go into the preview toolpaths option. 
Okay, so this is our first 24 inches of our plank of wood that we've got. So let's just reset this preview. So here is our plank of wood and we position the first 24 inches of that wood on our machine where x0, y0 is going to be at this point here. Okay, so then what we do is we run our toolpath. So let's just preview that toolpath there. Okay, so it will cut our first tile, happy with that, and then what we do then is we'd simply run our piece of wood through, so we're just feeding that through our machine, and then what we're going to do is we're going to reset our x0, y0 to start here, so exactly where the first tile finished, and then we'll look at previewing or running the toolpaths for the second tile. So let's go to tile T2 there and then preview that toolpath. Okay, so again, so now we've got our second tile. One more time, we're going to take that wood and then we're going to feed it through the gantry and position that up in line. Reset our X0, Y0 to where we last finished off there and then we'd go ahead and cut the toolpaths for tile 3. So we'll go to tile 3 and then we'll preview those toolpaths. And then ultimately we'd be left with the finished part which is this full mantelpiece that we've got here that we've managed to cut in sections by feeding that through in X. And so this would also work for separate pieces. So if we only had material that was 24 inches in length, what we'd do is we'll put our first blank tile on our machine, run the first tile toolpath, remove that, and then replace it with the second blank tile, run the second set of tile toolpaths, and then we'd repeat the process for the third tile. Now the 3D view doesn't really show us a realistic view of how the part is going to be machined in a 24 inch by 9 inch tile. And so if I just switch on the visibility of the 3D finish toolpath, I'm going to make tile 1 the active tile. And we can see that our X0, Y0 origin is in the lower left hand corner. You can see it's travelling out and then it's going to cut out the set of toolpaths for our first tile. Now if you make tile 2 the active tile, you'll still see that the X0, Y0 origin is at this position here and we've got that travel going all the way out where it's going to cut this tile out and if we go to tile 3, again you can see that travel coming from this X0, Y0 over here travelling out over to the right hand side to cut the third tile. And that's because we have an option here in the Toolpath Manager to draw toolpaths in the original position for visualisation. Like it says, this is purely for visualisation purposes only, just to show you the toolpaths that you are creating for a particular tile as part of the overall job. So what happens if we deselect this? If we deselect the option to draw toolpaths in the original position for visualisation, you'll see that we are now presented with a 24 by 9 inch tile to help us visualise the toolpaths per tile. So we get a better idea of how our individual tiles will look when we cut them out, or if we're feeding it through like we are in our example, this is how the actual section will look. So if we go to tile T1 here, so I'll update there in the 3D view, okay, and we can see our X0, Y0 is here, it's travelling over and it's going to cut that out. So if we just reset that preview and then preview the selected toolpath, this is what we'd get for the first tile, the first section of our plank of wood. Once we've done that, we'd then feed that through where we'd then position it ready for us to cut the toolpath for tile 2. So we've got the blank piece here and again we'll just simply switch on the visibility there and we can see X0 is at the bottom there and then we could preview that toolpath and we'd see how this individual tile looks or this section of our overall plank of wood would look. And then we'd switch over to tile 3. Again it'll update there in the 3D view. We've got a blank piece there. We could switch on the actual toolpath and again we'd see that the X0, Y0 is in the lower left hand corner here 
and again we could just simply go ahead and preview that. And so it's important to note here that draw toolpaths in original position for visualization when that is actually switched on it doesn't actually affect the x0 y0 position of the tiles and the toolpaths that we actually save out x0 y0 will always be where we set it in the material setup and will be the same for each individual tile Another option that we have in our manager is the tile overlap and this allows us to overlap toolpaths into the next tile by an amount that we specify. Now the reason for applying an overlap would be that you may be using special shaped tools which use all or part of the diameter of the tool where you may need to overcut to get the required effect from that tool so you may need to overcut slightly to accomplish this. We may also want to run a profile pass to cut the whole thing out and so we would need to ensure that we have perfectly cut lines so if we were using individual pieces to cut this out we can ensure that they fit perfectly when we come to piece them together. Now in our situation 24 inches is our maximum work area so in this situation we would have to be cutting material smaller than our workable area or we may do damage to our machine. And so to demonstrate this we're going to add a tile overlap of half an inch. With that in place let's use the update tiles option there. I'm just going to undraw this option so we can just focus on the individual tile and then we'll just switch on the visibility of that toolpath and if we just zoom in there on the 3D view we can see that that toolpath is actually overcutting and it overlaps the length of our tile and if we take a look in the 2D view if I just zoom in over here you can see that we've got this red area overlapping into the second tile by the amount that we've specified here in the tile overlap. So let's just put that in the normal view there. Okay, now in this case I'm just going to take that overlap off. So I'm going to put that to zero and then update those tiles. And now we're going to look at saving out our toolpaths. And so to do that, let's just close out of the preview form and then we're going to go into the save toolpath option. Okay, so you'll see that output tiled toolpaths is checked and other than this option, it pretty much works the same way that we save our ordinary toolpaths. Okay, so for example, let's take our 3D roughen and we'll select that. So here you can see we're using a quarter inch end mill and I'm going to take that, we're going to use the option to save toolpath, select the appropriate POS processor and then we could save that toolpath into my file and we'll just call that one 3D roughing and then I could go ahead and press save. And if I just save that again just to take a look at the actual toolpaths that we've actually saved out. So if we use the save option you'll see in my folder I have three different roughing toolpaths. Okay, so what the software's done is it's condensed all of the 3D roughing toolpaths into one file and then it's divided that toolpath up into three segments, one for each of the tiles that we have. And so for each toolpath that we save out, we're actually going to get three as we're working with three different tiles. So we could cancel that and then you could do the same for the 3D finish so we could select that one there and then use the save toolpath option and we'll call this one 3D finish, go ahead press save and again if we just go into that folder by saving that again you'll see that we have T1 finish, that's tile 1 finish, tile 2 finish and the tile 3 finish. Ok so let's just cancel out of there. And so that really completes this example and using the feed through option within the toolpath tiling manager. If you would like to find out how the individual tiling options work, there is another tiling tutorial and you can find that in the related video section for this tutorial in the tutorial browser. So let's just go ahead and save this file. So we'll go to File, Save As, and in the 3D Tiling Project folder, we're going to call this one Toolpath Tiling 3D Toolpaths. Press Save, and you can access that from that project folder.